In this presentation, I will walk you through the different ways we rely on a digital twin to carry out an autonomous mission at the Robotic Systems Lab. This work is a joint collaboration between the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH Zurich, Hexagon, and NVIDIA. This video snippet shows our quadrupedal robot Animal performing an autonomous mission at the ETH Hangerberg campus. There are several key components at play here, namely our rough terrain locomotion controller that is trained using reinforcement learning in the simulation, our large-scale navigation module that computes a feasible path from a point A to B inside the digital twin, a localization pipeline that tells us where the real robot is within the twin, and an autonomous reality capture to map new environments using the BLK to go on the robot. The basis for our digital twin is NVIDIA's Omniverse ecosystem. This powerful tool allows you to create a great variety of worlds, simulate physics accurately, as well as a wide range of sensors, and render everything with high fidelity. We use this tool at the Robotic Systems Lab to train complex locomotion and navigation behaviors for our quadrupedal robots. Let's have a look at how we create the twin in Omniverse. As a first step, we import the meshes that were created by Hexagon. Next, we add the physics and collision bodies to our scene so that we can simulate our robot in a physically accurate manner in there. This step only takes a couple of minutes and we are now ready to deploy our robot within the twin. To deploy our agent in that digital world, we need a control policy that can robustly walk on rough terrain. For that, we use deep reinforcement learning. The idea is simple. We teach a neural network to perform a task, reward it when it did well, and otherwise penalize it. The main challenge is that reinforcement learning requires a huge amount of data. And for our locomotion task, this is in the order of hundreds of millions of samples. To overcome this challenge, we use NVIDIA's massively parallelized simulation environment that allows to efficiently train your autonomous agent. The key idea here is that all of the computations for simulation and learning take place on the GPU, removing the inefficient back and forth transfer of data from the GPU to the CPU, which is typical with such pipelines. Using this environment, we were able to reduce the training times for our locomotion pipeline from one week to 20 minutes only. We then validate the policy by transferring it directly to the real robot, same to real. This means that we do not fine-tune the neural network on the real robot, and this works because the simulation is physically accurate. Of course, the robot is also able to walk inside the digital twin. Deploying your agent in simulation is very beneficial. Indeed, you can collect much more information than is available in real life, and you can also collect ground truth data. This rich information is useful, especially for training navigation and general autonomy. Here, you can see a couple of sensors that we are using for a quadrupedal robot. We use RGB and depth information, a height scanner, and a LiDAR sensor. Moreover, in contrast to the real world, you can apply all sorts of randomizations to the world and train agents for all kinds of scenarios. This is also useful to put the algorithms to the test before deployment in the real world. We have now integrated our controller and sensors inside the simulation and would like to solve a navigation task. The task of our robot is to successfully navigate from a point A to B. Again here, we use our massively parallelized simulation environment to find such a path. We spawn thousands of robots who will attempt to find a feasible and safe trajectory from the point A to B. Since our agents use the rough terrain controller to find a path, we know that if one of these agents is capable of connecting these two points, then the real robot will also be able to accomplish the task. 
The main limitation of the current approach is that it doesn't consider dynamic obstacles which are not present in the static digital twin. Also, it might be that some elements were changed since this twin was created. Therefore, we train a local obstacle avoidance network. This module uses the depth images from the front-facing camera and decides on a velocity command for the base to avoid any dynamic obstacles in the environment. Our simulated agent is now able to carry out the trajectory from the point A to B. However, we also want the real robot to achieve this task. We actually have to localize the real robot within the digital twin so that we know where it is compared to the path from A to B. In order to achieve this, we have to match the point cloud coming from our robot's onboard sensors, such as a Velodyne LiDAR, with the point cloud of the Leica RTC360 or BLK2GO that was initially used to create the twin. On the left, you can see the point cloud that was used to generate the twin, and on the right, a scan coming from the LiDAR sensor. The relative pose of the scan with respect to the point cloud of the twin is computed using the ICP algorithm. This is what it looks like during a mission. Our robot is now able to carry out this mission in the real world.